Hello everybody, welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a great day. We have quite an interesting amount of news today to start things off. On the 8th of August, Bittrex, one of the leading exchange platforms around the world, has announced that they will be launching USD, that is US dollar markets, for XRP and Ethereum Classic on their platform. The launch of the market is set to happen on the 20th of August, once again, a couple days before that September deadline. They said, get ready, we're adding more US dollar markets on Bittrex Exchange on August 20th. We're launching USD fiat markets for ETC and XRP. Bittrex states that the reason for adding XRP, USD, and ETC, USD trading pairs on the platform, is to enable their customers to buy cryptocurrency with United States dollars or USD directly and provide USD pairings for customers that will only be listed on their exchange platform. The exchange platform further states that the USD pairings is a step towards the adoption of blockchain technology. This would also decrease the dominance and influence of other or one other uh, particular cryptocurrency on other tokens in the crypto space. The platform said, and I do quote, we're going to continue adding tokens to our USD markets, providing our customers even more convenient, fast and secure trading options, as well as access to some of the world's most innovative blockchain projects, end quote. The news comes in the limelight after the exchange platform announced that they will be opening USD markets for their customers. Customers can avail either the USD trading only or USD trading withdrawal and deposit service provided by the platform. The service is available for customers with a personal account and corporate accounts. Moreover, only customers who live in California, Washington State, Montana, and qualified international customers are eligible to participate in the USD markets. The exchange platform has stated that they will be adding more states to their new market soon. With the addition of XRP and ETC to the platform's USD market, Bittrex will have a total of six cryptocurrencies in their USD market. The other cryptocurrencies are Bitcoin, Ethereum, Tether, and True USD. No, not much of a need to really read further. I'll start out with Ethereum Classic. I wonder what is going on with Ethereum Classic, and I'm sure you have noticed as well. We went for six, seven months without any news at all about Ethereum Classic. I'm not sure if something is brewing in the background that we just are unaware of, or maybe there's something that we all missed over the last couple of months. Or it could be that Ethereum Classic, because it has the name uh, in, in a podcast, they said that why they think that uh, there's such a, not a huge focus on uh, Ethereum Classic, uh, Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin Gold, even a little bit right now, is because that Bitcoin and Ethereum have been declared to be non-securities directly by the SEC. And therefore, uh, it's like other assets that they know for certain that they can add. Now, on to the main topic. The addition of XRP, when I when I saw this and when I read it, I was like, okay, that's kind of cool. And then it hit me once again like a ton of bricks. And this is why I always say I love the internet. Because it takes a couple of seconds to find information. If you look around for Bittrex's address, Bittrex is located in Seattle, Washington, for those who are unaware. That is in the United States. And the fact that... We now have another exchange, uh, the first one being DCEX, uh, who has announced that they are going to be adding XRP as their base pair. They are also a US, US, United States based uh, crypto exchange who is located in San Francisco, just down the block from Coinbase. Bittrex being in Seattle, Washington, and announcing that they are adding XRP, not even just adding. Uh, so Coinbase has announced a couple of days ago that they were going to be uh adding or potentially maybe they 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 threw it into a list with i think 30 other coins where they said that they may provide custody for certain cryptocurrencies they're not saying yes or no depending on which coins but xrp was one of those coins uh and the fact that now we have a uh another exchange in the united states that is going to be listing XRP with US dollars and not just on a custody base. If they, if they had said, okay, you can store your XRP with us, that's one thing. But the fact that it will be able to be traded, especially and bought and sold against the US dollar, leads me into the other thing that I found. I don't know if people just have too much time on their hands. I'm not sure why people do these things. Part of the speculation is that um, 
I think people are trying to uh, get the SEC to do something, and this will make sense in a couple of seconds. There's now another lawsuit being opened up against Ripple and subsequently XRP. On the 7th of August, a global investor law firm, Rosen Law Firm, issued a press release stating that it is investigating Ripple Labs Inc. and XRP. The firm confirmed that it is expecting to see if Ripple has violated any federal security laws in association with the sale of XRP tokens. According to reports, Rosen Law Firm is preparing a class action lawsuit attempting to reclaim damages suffered by investors in XRP tokens. On the 27th of June, another private XRP investor accused the CEO Brad Garlinghouse and Ripple Inc. Labs of illegally profiting from the increase in the value of the XRP token. Previously on the 3rd of May, Tyler Copeland Law, one of the first law firms in California, had filed a class action lawsuit against Ripple Labs as well. According to the report, the lawsuit targeted Ripple, its wholly owned ancillary XRP2, and Brad Garlinghouse for the sale of unlisted securities. The firm alleged that Ripple's sale of tokens is a violation of U.S. federal securities law. Another lawsuit was filed by a California resident, David O'Connor, 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 in the Superior Court of California, San Mateo County, concerning Ripple and XRP, claiming that the company created the XRP token and that used sales of the token in order to fund its operations and the development of the XRP ecosystem. So this, this is now the fourth lawsuit of uh, people doing this. I, like I said, I don't know if. People in the comment section before have said it could be one of two things. Either these people desperately hate Ripple and XRP. Um, they may be part of uh, the Bitcoin gang in that they are maximalists and they believe that they have the right to file a lawsuit as there is a face to the company Ripple. Who knows exactly what it could be on the other side. It could be what a lot of people in the comment section have been saying. They said... Uh, and I believe this as well. These lawsuits are happening too close together. Uh, Ethereum has a face of the company, as does Cardano, as do many other coins, as does Stellar. Uh, but for some reason, uh, Ripple and XRP seem to be uh, being nailed to the wall, if you will. And they're happening so frequently together, these lawsuits, that it kind of doesn't really make a lot of sense. So what it could be happening is is that there is some other company or organization out there who is uh, trying to squeeze the information out of the SEC. Uh, maybe if you throw enough lawsuits out there and say that something is something and the kind of pressuring the U.S. government to kind of, uh, you know, give their answer because we still have not had proper words on exactly what XRP is or rather, a d d okay, I I'll put it this way. We know what XRP is, but the U.S. government has not said it out loud. Um, one of the complaints that happened was, and I quote, Ripple's public commitment to limit the supply of XRP had its intended effect. In the weeks that followed, the price of XRP rapidly increased from approximately $0.22 cents per token on the 7th of December to $3.38 per token on the 7th of January 2018. Moreover, O'Connor claimed that the company had complete hold over the XRP ledger and that the network is not decentralized like Bitcoin or Ethereum. While these claims of the XRP ledger being controlled by Ripple have been debunked, many still believe that Ripple is still in control of the currency itself. Moreover, Ripple does not utilize the funds gathered from the sale of XRP in the secondary market, which removes it from the definition of being a security. I always say, and I mean this, in the most earnest way possible, do your own research. Ripple, the company, cannot create or stop or freeze or whatever XRP tokens. They cannot create anymore. Everything that was created before has already been created. Um, these have been looked into by major firms as well. It's not even like uh, these are people who, you know, decided to write an article and say whatever the case might be. We know what this is. I told you guys before, if you did not see the other video, the United States, if you have never lived in the States, and if you do live in the States, you know that the U.S. government is typically not one to be messed around with. That's the nicest way of saying it. Uh, the fact that Bittrex is located in the United States and that they are going to be adding XRP to U.S. dollar trading pairs pretty much confirms as the second exchange that 
XRP is not a security. I don't know why these lawsuits keep popping up. I don't know what uh, unnatural uh, urges they have towards XRP and why they're constantly trying to uh, tear the Ripple company down. To me, all this means is that, um, you know, uh, for me, all news is kind of good news. As long as you're in the news, you're kind of letting things be known. But always read, not even read between the lines, just read the articles. Don't even, if you don't trust this website, there are 35 more that are also listing this information. Uh, this is definitely going to happen. And this is happening on the 20th of August. I'm not exactly sure when DCEX is supposed to be launching. They said it within the next couple of weeks. I sent them an email as well. And they told me, yes, they are actually going to be um, listing XRP as their base currency. And I think they're trying to, uh, I think, get some other type of license. I forgot what it said in the email. They're trying to get some other type of license to be able to do something else with XRP. And also other pairs and other... Things like that. Anyway, this is the uh, the heavy news for today. I don't know exactly what you would want to call this or what you would actually uh, label this under, but spread the word. Um, stop spreading fear. Um, uh, I almost said FUD. I hate the word FUD so much. Uh, just, you know, whatever. Um, anyway, let's move on from this entire topic. It's I, I need the SEC to kind of just come out with their information already so I can uh, stop uh, beating this dead horse because I keep seeing people in the comment section uh, screaming at other people who are um, pro XRP and calling it this and calling it that. And I'm uh, very thankful for the other people in the comment section who tell them to do their own research. And um, it's actually kind of funny as well. I see a lot of people when they're told do your own research and they send them links telling them to, you know, look at this. And they come back an hour later and I see their comment and they're like, oh, I didn't know all of that was actually true. The truth is out there. Uh, you just have to want to find it. Next up, a near dozen financial regulators from countries around the world have collaborated to form a new network to help further the development of financial technologies like blockchain. Now labeled as the Global Financial Innovation Network or GFIN. The alliance sees 11 financial regulators on their respective nations come together under a proposed mandate by the United Kingdom's Financial Conduct Aid Authority, or the FCA, earlier this year. The British regulator is working with 11 counterparts from nations including Australia, Abu Dhabi, Bahrain, Dubai, Hong Kong, Singapore, and Canada. The GFIN's genesis is based on the idea of a global sandbox. The FCA said, suggesting the network will help bridge innovative firms to interact with regulators both domestically and internationally between countries as they look to scale new ideas, the announcement added. Now in a preliminary phase that sees the body seek feedback from core objectives, a roadmap and where its priorities should lie, the GFIN stressed its main functions would include bringing firms with an environment in which to trial cross-border solutions. What this comes down to is, and I, not, I wasn't fearful that this was going to happen, uh, but I kind of thought so. Uh, the first country to talk about a regulatory sandbox was, I believe, Russia. Pretty much comes down to the idea of a sandbox. If you are a parent and you have a sandbox sitting in front of you and you have your child inside the sandbox, you can see what your child is doing as they sit in front of you. So the idea is, is that these countries will come together to create a global sandbox in that any major company or any company in general who's trying to start something uh, within these countries, and I think there was a list of other countries as well somewhere, uh, pretty much they will be looking over their shoulder to see that everything that they're doing is legal, making sure that everything is correct, and um, I guess this is only going to kind of uh, spread further. I One, uh, this could stop a number of scams. Two, I don't care for the uh, breathing over someone's neck. Uh, but three, I think this could be a good thing as in, like I always say, as long as they're not banning it or they're saying ICOs are completely illegal or they're saying you cannot build things on a blockchain, uh, I would rather them breathe heavily over someone's shoulder looking at everything that they're doing to making sure that it's not illegal, following the rules, um, as opposed to saying, no, this is completely banned across all of these countries. Uh, as of now, I think it says, yes, 11 countries or something like that that are doing this. I'm going to assume by the end of this year, it's going to expand to around 35. Uh, as more people kind of finally realize that blockchain is a thing, cryptos aren't going anywhere. And um, so it's, uh, you know, 
mm, negatively good news. I don't know, not, not really negative. Anyway, the point is, uh, this is definitely going to happen. Um, and it's think of it as good news in that if your country was listed, that means that crypto will probably not be banned in your country. Uh, but moreover, it'll probably just be um, regulated, but you'll still be able to do what you want and or create new blockchain products if you are tech savvy. Next up, this is actually uh, quite significant. The Lightning Network active on the Bitcoin mainnet has passed 3,000 nodes with capacity for almost 100 BTC in August. Data from monitoring resource 1ml.com confirms that network capacity increased 85% in the past 30 days, bringing mainnet Lightning's total funds accommodation to 97 Bitcoin or just around 628,000 US dollars. Lightning originally debuted around the start of 2018 in its mainnet form with growing acceleration through quarter two. In May, Twitter commentator Kevin Rook notes, capacity remained comparatively low at just 18 BTC before a dramatic, in dramatic, <laughs> dramatic increase began in July. At the time, Bitcoin is reported on a single node entering the network with a capacity of 35.4 BTC which at the time doubled its size. The node has since all but disappeared, leaving familiar names such as bit refill and less familiar entities leading the capacity count. Um, so what's, what's kind of, uh, this was, I think we spoke about this before, maybe like a second. I, I don't know if I, I think I saw the article. I don't know if I actually talked about it. Uh, the point is, is that um, a couple of months ago, there was a company who said that they actually controlled 49% of the lightning network. And a lot of people did not care for that because it led to the talk of centralization once again when it comes to uh, Bitcoin and Bitcoin mining. But the, with the expansion of the Lightning Network, this seems to have uh, fizzled out, if you will. So this is actually very good news. Um, I'll go a bit more in a couple of seconds as well. They have the numbers right there. Despite the continued rapid expansion of Lightning, the technology continues to space sporadic criticism, which proponents have now begun to counter. Responding to claims that sources such as Bit Bitcoin.com affiliate David shares that Lightning nodes were centralized, the developer known as Stop and Decrypt demonstrated that the way visual maps represent them gave the illusion of centralization. He said the fact of the matter is this network graph actually does a really terrible job of presenting the Lightning Network to you. It's pretty and fun to play with, but it does everything involved and analytic injustice, he wrote in the blog. Um, yeah, anyway, uh, what was I about to say? Completely had a brain fart. The point is, is that if you looked at the graph before, I've shown you guys the graph before, uh, the graph is supposed to be a way that people can actually see what the network looks like and this is where the centralization idea has come from but the the other major centralization idea has come from not just the look of the network it's that we know that lightning nodes are for sale by oh gosh not bitmain they ha everything has a bit in, in in the front of its name i'll figure it out later not really important the people who created lightning uh, they're actually selling off nodes and we know that a couple of banks have also been buying lightning nodes as well so this is where is kind of where the idea has come from the point is even after all of this uh, a lot of us have come to the conclusion that we won't ever really be able to get out of 100% uh, centralization or even 50% at some point. Uh, richer people or people who have money will be able to control a large portion of wealth. That's just how the world works. Um, Lightning isn't expected to be fully implemented or fully completed for around another year and a half to two years, which once again sets us up in that 2020 timeline. Um, and at this point, in around two years, it's expected that transactions on the Bitcoin network, because of everything else is going to be built on top of it, could be the fees on the Bitcoin network could be as low as one cent, if not around half a cent. Uh, so this is going to be definitely uh, something that we are going to be looking at over the next couple of years, even as we uh, do it. But it's nice to hear that it's expanding rapidly. I hope that more people, I, I don't, I'm not having really uh dived very deep into lightning i'm not sure if um you can just actively I, i'm pretty sure you can actually open a, a network node uh, but the problem is is that you have to be able to pre-fund it uh with bitcoin and the issue is is that most people don't have you know 300 bitcoin to fund a node with uh but that is something that's left for the future i know a lot of people have um been talking about opening up a node to try and uh, decentralize the network as much as possible, but only time will tell. 
Point is, is that this is very good news if you are a Bitcoin fan or a crypto fan in general, because as of now, we know that uh, Bitcoin drags the network, uh, the, the, the marketplace around at will whenever it wants to. Next up, this one is actually really weird. California-based business and financial software company Intuit, that is I-N-T-U-I-T, has been awarded a patent for processing Bitcoin payments via text message. The patent, published by the U.S. Patent, oh my gosh, and trademark office USPTO on Tuesday, details how a system of virtual accounts could enable two users to transfer funds using mobile phones. The company first filed the patent in 2014, shortly after it launched its QuickBooks Bitcoin payment service, a Bitcoin transaction processor with small businesses could use to accept Bitcoin in lieu of fiat currencies the application states the invention relates to a method of processing payments the method includes receiving by a payment service for a pay payer mobile device of a payer a payment text messaging comprising a payment amount and an identifier of a payee mobile device i feel like they could have simplify that a bit more it goes on to explain that validation of a payment text message would be done in a number of different ways one, one requires sending through a password request associated with an amount account of the user. Another to process amount after it takes, another takes into account the use of voicemail as further validation from sending through a voice phone call that is automatically disconnected by the payment service without answering. Not going to really read through much more of that. Uh, one, I didn't foresee a future where people would be trying to send Bitcoin payments through text messages. I feel like the apps that we have now are already more than enough. That's not me talking down about this app. I don't know these people. Uh, I commend them on trying to further the uh, the cryptocurrency space. But it seems kind of odd, and especially that um, maybe it has something to do with like the KYC thing, you know, knowing your customer. Because it seems a little out there uh, for this entire thing. But I'm pretty sure we're going to see a lot more of these. I don't know if this just mainly has to do with... Uh, you know, we were talking about before in um, a lot of countries that don't have strong economies and how a lot of people who don't have smartphones, they can actually send uh, crypto payments through text if they have the, you know, the older styled phones we, before we had smartphones and all these other things. So maybe this is for them, uh, but I don't see much of a reason if you can download, uh, you know, about eight different apps right now to be able to send Bitcoin or crypto to your friends that you would need to send it through text. Maybe they're also trying to do it because this is kind of what um I think Ken is doing as well. Kick, yeah, the Kick app. Uh, they're making it so that within the app, you can also text money to your friends. But I mean, that was also a texting and messaging app. So I guess that kind of makes a bit more sense. Anyway, last up. So I'm going to work backwards on this one. A lot of people... Um, have been talking about this the last, I want to say three, four, five days. So I'm going to go from the present and into the past a little bit. Um, the coin salt is in the news today. Cryptocurrency backed loan provider salt lending announced it has expanded into 20 new U S states on Wednesday. The firm, which allows users to borrow cash against their cryptocurrency holdings is now available in 35 states, including Washington, DC, also revealed today is a new tech platform for Salt clients, which the firm says includes updated tools for borrowing funds and faster transactions, as well as a new member loyalty program. The firm's chief executive, Bill Sinclair, who took up his post last month, told Coindesk that the process of expanding to new states is complicated. I'm pretty sure this is why we keep having news that all these things have expanded into 12 new states and then three more states and... Uh, and that the company's legal team has been working with regulatory experts to ensure that the loans it provides fall within each state's individual laws. Salt loans are and will be structured within laws, regulations, and guidelines provided by each jurisdiction in which the loan is formed, he said. As such, the platform is newly available for residents of Connecticut, Florida, Illinois, Kansas, Texas, Maryland, Michigan, Wisconsin, and Maine, among others. The company is currently moving its current user to the new platforms, Sinclair said, adding that for the rebuild, we started with some key community leaders and worked their feedback into the nuances of our technology. The first borrowers to get loans in the new system when were those who previously applied in areas to which uh, we were not approved to lend and were still interested in a SALT loan. To attract further attention, to attract new members, 
and retain existing clients. The startup today also unveiled a new member loyalty program called Proof of Access. The scheme lets customers modify their loan conditions using the firm's own token, also called SALT, according to Sinclair. So this goes, first of all, like I said, we're starting from now. We haven't heard about SALT in a very, very, very long time. And I'll tell you exactly why I think this has been happening. Uh, when we go back just a couple of... So after I found this article, I was like, okay, let me look up a bit more SALT. Let me see exactly if I can find anything else that they've been doing over the last couple of weeks. Apparently, uh, the CEO, if I'm not mistaken, has um, left SALT. This happened on the 29th of July. This article came out the 8th of August. So like I said, we're going to backtrack a tiny bit. Blockchain-backed loan provider Nexo has offered to buy out rival SALT lending as the unexpected departure of SALT CEO spurred rumors that the company is pulling an exit scam. Nexo published on Friday a letter of intent, or an LOI, to purchase SALT's remaining qualifying assets consisting of loans receivable secured by corresponding collateral assets, brand assets, and customer database. If the offer is accepted, Nexo will provide a funding capacity of up to $2 million per customer of SALT's outstanding loan applicants. Nexo also wrote in the letter that it will consider accepting SALT tokens as collateral for payments or payment for the platform outstanding loans, better enabling the potential transition of users and assets. As for pre-existing memberships, Nexo has pledged to honor SALT users on the platform. Announcing its offer on Twitter, Nexo described the move as lending a helpful hand to its competition. In its LOI, the company explained, and I quote, Nexo is concerned with the latest developments at SALT due to their potentially detrimental influence on the sentiment of investors and borrowers in the crypto-backed lending industry, as well as the blockchain community in general. In order to mitigate the consequences, Nexo, its partners, and affiliates could readily acquire remaining qualifying assets of SALT and provide liquidity to its community, end quote. Uh, so I saw people... Not people talking about this, but I kept on seeing like news about SALT or something about like exit rumor scams. Apparently, this is exactly what it was. I guess what it comes down to is I think the so to put it as blunt as possible, uh, the market is down. I'm sure you've noticed. And what the entire point of SALT has been to get loans. So, uh, OK. When I first learned about SALT, uh, the idea behind SALT was and is genius any type of lending platform like i said before is genius because i have i am of the mindset that people will continue to get themselves into debt whether they uh believe so or not we uh many people live off of debt and that um the entire point of the salt lending platform salt came out as the market was going up the idea was is that people will start to take out loans in crypto especially in salt i think you could also loan against bitcoin or something like that on their platform um, as the market continued to go up because people were, I think at this time, taking out like mortgages and stuff like that on their homes. So what I think ended up happening was as the market went down and nobody wanted a loan because nobody wants a loan when the market is going down. People only want lend uh, to be lent money as the market is going up. I assume the last eight months have not been easy for any lending platform. So I think the CEO left. Uh, I don't know if he got annoyed, uh, if he thought the entire platform was going down. But if you go from July 29th and you go a bit further to where we are now, uh, I guess SALT is still around. I assume, I don't know the the inner workings, maybe they were purchased by Nexo. Uh, maybe they put a new CEO in place. And the point is, I, I they're still around. They've expanded into another 35 states. I assume it hasn't been easy uh, going into other states. Not sure exactly why it's uh, so difficult. Uh, the point is, so this is, I guess, the news for SALT over the last like six or seven months. There hasn't been any news about them, but that's to be fair. Like I said, this has happened to a lot of other projects. A lot of them have just kept quiet and I guess kind of kept their heads down. But the controversy was that the CEO left. I assume that Nexo or some other companies probably purchased them or not. Uh, then SALT is still in control of itself and they have also expanded and I assume... Who knows exactly, you know, no one knows what the market is going to be, uh, but the entire point of lending platforms is that uh, they do well when the market is going up because people FOMO into the market, people look for money that they uh, may not have, and then they try and get loans to do this as collateral, you know, against their uh, the things that they're trying to get in the cryptocurrency market. And this is how the um, 
the machine keeps moving. But yeah, like I said, a very interesting news day. Um, it's kind of all over the place, but it's still relatively interesting, I would say. Um, quick side note. I felt like I was talking odd in the video. Sorry if my um, I told you guys maybe other times before. Um, I've lived in many different places uh, since being young. And I have a very weird accent sometimes. Uh, so if I sounded English at any point as I was talking, um, I'm really sorry. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I just have a weird accent. And I, I, I guess all my friends are kind of used to it now. But it kind of is what it is. I hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys are having a great day, morning, afternoon, and or evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. Thank you once again for watching. I do appreciate it. Uh, tell me, I, I don't think I've actually ever used Bittrex. If you've used Bittrex and have liked it, or you know, even if you've hated it, if you thought Bittrex was the worst thing you ever touched in your entire life, let people know in the comment section below. And I mean, please be honest as well, because the fact that they are allowing more USD pairings will be... Uh, not make or break, but it is going to have a major effect on the market and not just for the price of XRP because they're also adding other coins. Uh, but the fact that we are going to have another gateway to get into crypto that's not Coinbase is going to be very significant as we move forward. And the fact that this is going to happen on the 20th of August is going to be absolutely going to be a cherry on top of that cake. Hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you once again, and I'll talk to you all soon. See you.